Hey everyone, tonight we're going to tackle something that's a little more ambitious, but definitely within the reach of an amateur or hobbyist like me, Milky Way Photography. Are you an amateur photographer who wants to take better pictures and have fun doing it? Then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Now let's get started. I'm here at my hunting camp in South Georgia, and tonight we're going to try something that sounds very difficult but is actually growing in popularity as more and more amateur photographers realize just how easy it is. We're going to take a picture of the night sky showing off the band of the Milky Way galaxy. I know that this may seem intimidating, but it doesn't require much in terms of specialized equipment, and it doesn't require any special skills. In fact, most of the hard work is done in the prep, before the shoot. So let's go over how I did my prep for this photograph. When preparing for a shoot like this, you need to consider date, time, and location. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, the Milky Way galaxy is generally visible during the summer months and in the southern sky. You want to make sure that you can get to a location that has the darkest skies possible. You can check that using a website called lightpollutionmap.info. I'll put a link down in the description. I'm in South Georgia, and it's an area that looks pretty good on the map in terms of light pollution. So we've taken care of the location piece. Now let's talk about date and time. Again, the key to success here is eliminating light pollution, and that doesn't mean just from man-made sources. The moon can be pretty troublesome when you're trying to take a shot like this as well. Tonight's the new moon, so no worries there. Finally, I need to figure out what's the best time to capture a picture of the Milky Way galaxy as it rises, travels across the night sky, and sets, much like the sun and the moon do. Luckily, you don't have to be an astronomer to figure this out. There's a paid app available called PhotoPills that uses augmented reality to give you a display of exactly how the Milky Way galaxy will appear at any location and at any given date and time. I didn't get the app because, well, because I'm cheap. Instead, I went to Stellarium.org, again, link in the description, and used their free web application. After a little playing around, I figured out how to enter in my location and see a simulated view of the Milky Way and determined that it would be visible in a south to southwest between 9 p.m. and midnight. So now that we've taken care of date, time, and location, let's talk gear. All you really need is a camera, a relatively wide-angle lens, and a tripod. I'll be using the Nikon Z6 and the 24-70 to f4 kit lens that came with it. A full-frame camera is definitely recommended, but you can get good results with the Crop Sensor Camera 2. It just might require taking multiple shots and stacking them in a noise reduction software program. I have a relatively inexpensive Zomi tripod with a Manfrotto fluid head attached. You'll also want to bring along some flashlights and batteries. <laughs> One thing that goes a long way to improving a shot like this is some sort of foreground element. Now this can be as simple as a hillside or a tree, but I've chosen this little country church as my backdrop and I've arrived a little early to see if I can get some interesting compositions facing to the south where the Milky Way is going to rise in the night sky. There's a couple of ways that you can approach a shot like this. The first is to try and get everything in a single shot, and that's what I'll be trying first. The second approach is to take multiple exposures, one for the sky and one or more for your foreground elements. That way you have a little more control over the light levels and the noise levels in the individual exposures that you'll combine later in Photoshop. Starting with the single shot, we need to determine our camera settings. Shoot in manual mode, and if your camera or lens has image stabilization, turn it off. As far as our settings go, we'll start with aperture because that pretty much has to be wide open to let in the maximum amount of light. Now I'm shooting with a 24 to 70 f4, so f4 is my maximum aperture. Next, we determine our shutter speed using the 500 rule. 
Now, this isn't really complicated. All you have to do is divide 500 by the focal length of your lens. I'm gonna be shooting at 24 millimeters and 500 divided by 24 gives me about a 20 second exposure. That's the maximum exposure time that I want. And you may be wondering, well, why can't I just leave my shutter open as long as I need to to get the proper exposure? And the reason, of course, is the rotation of the Earth. You see, as the stars move across the sky, if your shutter stays open too long, even that slight movement will make the stars appear as ovals or even streaks in your final image. Now, the wider your lens is, the less apparent that movement will be and the longer your shutter speed can be. So if you have a wider lens, you're better off to use it, especially starting out. And remember, this is just a guide. This is just giving us a starting point. You may have to look at your images closely to determine whether or not you need to make adjustments to your shutter speed. Also, keep in mind, if you're using a crop sensor camera, you have to multiply the focal length of your lens by the crop factor before you divide it into 500 to get your shutter speed. Finally, we're left with ISO, and that's where a full-frame camera really shines. The Z6 has excellent low-light performance, and I'll probably end up somewhere between 3200 and 6400 for my ISO setting, but we'll try some different things and see what we get. Once you have your settings adjusted and your composition set up, you want to switch to manual focus. You do not want to use autofocus for a shot like this. You're going to want to switch to manual and focus at infinity. One way that you can do that is by using Live View. You set up your live view, and you try to pinpoint one of the brightest stars in the frame. Then you adjust your focus until that star reaches its smallest apparent size. That means you're focused at infinity. Another way to do it is to set up your focus before you get on sight. Just point your camera at something far away and focus it either manually or with autofocus. Once it's focused, don't adjust the focus any further. Set your camera into manual focus, and some people even recommend putting a piece of gaffer's tape on the focus ring so you don't accidentally bump it and knock it out. Okay, I've got all my settings adjusted, I've got my camera set up, and I think I've got a good composition with the church. I'm just waiting for it to get dark enough for the shot. Okay, it's still kind of early. The sun has just set, but I've taken some test shots and I'm pretty excited because you can already start to see the faint outline of the Milky Way galaxy above the church. My composition worked out great and I'm really looking forward to getting some shots. I'm just waiting for the rest of the daylight to die out from the sky and hopefully we'll be able to get some good shots of the Milky Way. And I've got to tell you, this is, this is kind of exciting because I'm using my camera to take a picture of something that I can't even see with my eyes. Now, if that doesn't get you excited about photography, I don't know what will. All right, so I'm playing around with my settings here. I've gotten some really good shots. Um, obviously, I won't know for sure till I get them back and look at them on the computer, but they're looking really nice on the back of the camera screen. Um, so I'm playing around with my settings and I'm really pushing the ISO just to see what I can get. Um, I just went all the way up to ISO 10,000. Um, that one might be pretty noisy, uh, but I stepped up from 3,200 to 4,000 to 6,400 to 8,000 and then 10,000. Um, I think I'm gonna take a few more shots here and then I'm gonna uh, go across the road and see what we can find over there. With a little planning, you can get some pretty impressive results, and I'm happy with these images. But I'll be posting a follow-up video showing you how you can take these pictures up a notch by doing some light painting on your foreground elements. But this is more than enough information to get you started. So go out, take pictures of the Milky Way, and have fun doing it. Thanks.